Hello crew, today we're going to look at a problem that deals with weak acids and bases. And my hope from this problem is that it'll help you get over some conceptual difficulties that can come up in some of these problems. If we take a look at the problem, you can see that we're going to add a known mass of sodium acetate into a 100 milliliter beaker, and I just want to know what the pH would be. What makes this a little bit more challenging is sometimes when you're first learning some chemistry, you see something like this, sodium acetate, and you're not exactly sure what to do with the thing. And really, I think that's where we should start. We should see what happens when you take this thing, sodium acetate, and you put it into water. If you looked up your solubility rules, you would see that this would dissolve in water and dissociate, which means that I would get sodium plus plus acetate anion. The sodium in this problem isn't going to really do anything. You don't tend to have to worry about sodium being particularly involved in any sort of acid-base chemistry. What's going to be important is the acetate anion that's over here. Think about our naming rules. The acetate anion, if I throw a hydrogen onto this thing, remember the endings, I ate too much, it made me sick. So acetate will go to acetic acid. And that means this is all of a sudden an option. To have CH3CO2H, this is acetic acid, plus a water in equilibrium with acetate, that same very thing that we have up above, plus that. Notice I'm not including the sodium. And what I have is I have my acid, and here's my base. Here's my conjugate base. And here's my conjugate acid. Now, if you're still not totally sure why we're doing this, I'll bring your attention up here where it says the pKa of acetic acid is 4.75. This is a value that you could go and you could find in the appendices of some textbooks. I could find the pKa of acetic acid. What I won't find, I would not find the Kb, the equilibrium constant for a base, for a species like this. It's just kind of traditional that what we do is we see the acid version of any conjugate base pair and you look up the Ka value. And then there are relationships between Ka and Kb that we're going to use. So right now I have the acid reaction written up for acetic acid. So this has the Ka that's of interest. When I put sodium acetate into solution, what I'm effectively doing is I'm adding this species into the beaker. So our reaction that we are truly interested in is using this thing as a base. So I'm going to write that down here in green. CH3, CO2 minus plus a water is going to be in equilibrium with acetic acid. plus OH minus. So when I put sodium acetate into water, the acetate anion will act as a base and this reaction in green will happen. This guy is described by the Kb. So let me just make sure I draw your attention to this. The pKa plus the pKb is going to be equal to pKw. Remember Kw is 10 to the minus 14, so pKw is equal to 14. What I need to know to actually crank and do an ice table that's going to come up in the near future is I need to know Kb, but I'm able to use the Ka from this reaction in order to get it. So I'm writing now the pKa is 4.75 plus the pKb, so that's not exactly what I have written up here. It's just got the negative log of it though. But the pKb, that is equal to 14. So I have that pKb is going to be equal to 9.25. Now when I do my actual equilibrium expression using Kb for this green reaction, pKb is not going to be helpful. I need the Kb. So in order to find that, I have this sort of relationship. It's written for Ka's up there, but that's the thing I'm going to use. So my Kb is going to be equal to 10 raised to the negative pKb, so negative 9.25, which means my final Kb 
it's going to be 5.62 e minus 10. And that is a super important number that we want to hold on to. So I'm going to clear some board space and I'm going to rewrite some of these numbers. I'm just going to clean this all up. Okay, I rewrote the equation just up above because I'm going to use that to start my ice table. I also put the KB value over here. One last time, I just want to point out that sodium is in here, but it is a spectator ion. If I wanted to, I could say that I have sodium plus acetate plus water, and then over on this side, I would still have my sodium plus sitting in there. It's not going to participate in the reaction that's involving acids and bases right now. So from here, we're going to start our ice table. Remember, I for initial concentration, C for change in concentration, E for equilibrium concentration, where E is the thing I really want to know. That is specifically, I would love to know the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide, this OH minus. There's one little side calculation I need to do in order to find the initial concentration of acetate that I'm putting in. And that is where this information is relevant. This initial information given in the problem that talks about how much material we're actually putting in. These equilibrium expressions for aqueous solutions deal with molarity, so I need to know what molar solution I have. Given that for every one sodium acetate I put in, I get exactly one acetate ion. The stoichiometry there is one to one. I just need to know what molar sodium acetate was originally put in. So to do that, that's going to be me here converting the grams of sodium acetate to moles by dividing by the molar mass. It's gram per mole. So N, number of moles, it's going to be 0 0.0305, doing a little rounding there, that's mole. And then my molarity is going to be the number of moles divided by the volume, but it has to be in liters. So that's going to be 0 0.100 liters. So my molarity, I can just shift the decimal place. And I'm going to squeeze that in right up here and then erase what's down below. So my final molarity, I'm shifting that decimal place, is 0 0.305 molar. I said final, but truly that's the initial molarity. I guess we'll do one more thing over here that I haven't done yet, and that is write up what the equilibrium expression is going to look like. Remember, it's going to be products over reactants, but only for those species that are aqueous and can have a changing concentration. That is in this particular case. So my products, that's going to be my acetic acid. CH3CO2H times the hydroxide anion over my reactant, my only reactant that has a changing concentration. That is the acetate anion. So now we come over and we're ready to use this ice table so that we can figure out these equilibrium expressions, which ultimately will get plugged in to these different values there. My initial concentration of acetate I previously calculated is 0 0.305. We said that the concentration of water is not going to be changing, so I don't really need to deal with it at all in this particular problem. Initially, when you're putting this sodium acetate into solution, I don't have any of this particular product. So I'm going to say zero, and we know that we effectively have a concentration of zero for hydroxide as well. We know in neutral water it is 10 to the minus 7. We're going to call that zero. It's a decent approximation for us. Looking at my stoichiometry, which is 1 to 1 to 1 in this, as this reaction starts to shift over to the right, I'm going to lose some amount, so that's minus x. But I'm going to be gaining, happens to be that same amount, again because it's the 1 to 1 to 1 stoichiometry, so I have plus x's over there. And then of course the equilibrium, remember, is just add i plus c in the same column. So I have 0 0.305 minus x. This is going to be 0 plus x equals x, and same thing for that one. I have my KB value. Now I plug in these equilibrium concentrations, which are still functions of x. It's going to be 5.62e minus 10, that was the KB, is equal to x times x is x squared, and I'm going to go ahead and write it like that, divided by 
0 0.305 minus x. I'm going to switch colors just to differentiate here a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this entire denominator over and I'm going to go ahead and distribute this quantity in onto the two terms. The 0 0.305 times that KB value is going to end up being 1.714 E minus 10. Then I will have minus 5.62 e minus 10 quantity multiplied by x is equal to x squared. And just a quick rewrite where this is in the form that would be suitable for the quadratic equation. And I will find, once I run the quadratic, that x is equal to 1.309 e minus 5 or negative. It's ever so slightly different, but where I'm rounding, it's going to look like the same number but it is actually slightly different. We need to go through that process of figuring out which one of our solutions is correct. And the way that I have this set up, the concentration actually needs to go down because I'm saying that some of that is shifting over to the right. And so the negative solution would not imply a concentration that's decreasing. So the positive solution is the one that I want. I'm gonna grab just a little bit more board space again. And from here, we can use this to start finally getting at the pH value. Notice that the x value actually represents my OH concentration in molar. So what I will do is I'll take the, the p value, remember p means negative log, so I'm going to find the pOH, which is just the negative log of my 1.309 e to the minus 5, which is 4.88 and then there's an expression that looks very similar to this up here which is just pH plus pOH equals 14 and I'm just using that so I'm doing 14 minus this value is going to be my pH it's going to be 9.12 and that is my final answer so like I mentioned at the front of this video a lot of the challenge to this problem is figuring out what actually happens when you put that species into solution. Once you sort it out, once you figure out that you need to deal with the KB, not the KA, and once you make the connection that acetic acid is involved, even though I put in sodium acetate, then you can crank on this ice table and just carry out the math that we needed to do. Hopefully you picked up a lot of that, and if you did, you should definitely let your computer know.